So I'm back in the UK after a week in California, riding my bike and also attending the Sea Otter Classic Festival. You might have seen some videos on the show over the last few days, link down below and up above just in case you missed them. So in this video, I want to reflect on the show and pick six of the best standout bikes from my time at the show. So starting at number six and working our way down to number one, we start the Van Riesel RCR. Okay, visually this new Van Riesel from Decathlon isn't the most exciting or perhaps appealing bike, but it's exciting for what it represents from this bike company. It's a really ambitious move to step up to a top table and compete with the likes of Specialized, Callendale and Trek. And also, if rumours are to be believed, to be back in the World Tour Peloton next year. So a big move for the bike brand, the bike company that has a reputation for great value money. And the new bike does have all the features you would expect on such a bike. A bike designed to be both lightweight and aerodynamic. And on the aero front, the company has worked with a French aerospace company to ensure it's as fast as they say it is. They haven't revealed details or wind tunnel testing, but hopefully do for the launch of the bike and how it compares to key rivals in this space. A UK bike brand trying to make inroads into the US market is Avitas, and they showed their new upcoming Venon Evo. Hasn't been officially launched yet, but it had two bikes on display at the show. And it's a really exciting interpretation of the sort of road bike that many cyclists, like you and I, actually want and need. So on the surface, it's a fast and lightweight looking road bike, but one that also has space for 40 mil wide tires. So an all road light gravel bike, and they showed it in two builds, a road setup with 28 mil wide slicks and a two by drivetrain, and also a one by setup with wide gravel tires and a one by configuration. And their idea and their thinking, if you buy one of the bikes, the road or gravel setup, and have a spare set of wheels with different tires and essentially had two bikes. One bike that can do it all. Two bikes in one, a do everything option. A Postal N plus one killer. And the reason I think it's a sort of bike that many of us actually need, because a large reason for the popularity of gravel bikes is for the wide tires they allow you to fit. Not really for going off-road, but fitting a fat slick tire and mainly using it for riding crappy road surfaces and maybe the occasional gravel, but mainly as a road bike, because road bikes and even endurance bikes are limited in tire clearance compared to gravel bikes. So here we have a road bike with gravel tire clearance. That does look like the answer to our needs. So first impressions are really good. Can't wait to find out more when it launches, hopefully later this year. There were lots of small, interesting and cool bike brands at Sea Otter, and one of them that really stood out for me was Black Heart Bike Company. They launched their brand new road titanium bike option at the show, and my goodness, was it a good looking bike. And it's also a bike that really pushes the limits of titanium. So it's a super modern, super sleek looking aero race bike, but made from that most timeless of frame materials, titanium. So we have a full carbon one-piece handlebar and stem with internal K-routing, just like you get on any top-end carbon race bike. A slightly cam tail profile down tube for a bit more aero, drop rear stays, and a sloping top tube. But they're neat features like a SRAM UDH rear dropout and a T47 bottom bracket. And I think it's one of the nicest looking bikes in that sort of clean, timeless, but modern appearance that Titanium gives a bike. And one I hopefully can't wait to ride in the future to see if it rides as well as it looks. Another standout bike from the show was Bridge Bike Works, a Toronto-based company that do all their own carbon manufacturing in-house and have some really cool features on display. They were showing their Surveyor, an all-road bike, so carbon frame, with their own carbon fork, and the all-road in name signifies the fact it will take up to a 40 mil wide tire. So a road bike with 
typical road bike geometry and short rear end, but with space for 40 mil wide tires. So in a similar way to that Vitus I showed you earlier, here is a modern road bike, but it would take gravel tires or space for a really wide tire for dealing with crappy road surfaces that most of us have to contend with. So it's really interesting to see a big bike company and a small bike company arrive at the same sort of evolution of what many of us actually want from a road bike these days. And they're packing some really well thought out details as well that shows the attention to detail from this small company. So up front, a full internal cable routine because that's what people want these days. And you can fit any handlebar, one piece, two piece, and you can go with external with a top cap for the cables to come outside. So you're not tied into a bespoke system. Then meanwhile, at the back, a detail I really like. It's a 27.2 mil seat post and an external seat clamp. So modern at the front and classic at the back. And then we get to the most interesting detail on this bike by far, and probably the standout tech feature of the entire show. So what the Toronto-based company have done is make the world's first threaded carbon fiber bottom bracket. So T47 dimension, so oversized, but the threads actually cut from carbon fiber. It's something I've never seen before and something the company has worked really hard to develop. There's a patent in place for this design and the company assures me they have done stacks and stacks of testing to problem solve all the issues that I'm sure many of us can think of for such a design. They have a very precise manufacturing process. They're not a big company, so it's all very small scale, definitely not a large scale setup at all. And all the concerns in terms of cross threading and damaged threads, they say they have worked on. The example they showed actually had damaged threads. You can see it on the video here. But despite the damage, the bottom bracket cup went into the bottom bracket threads just fine. And they say if you do damage the threads beyond the point of them being usable, you can mill them out and put in a sleeve for a press fit bottom bracket. And it's hopefully a process and a bike I can get a closer look at. We're speaking to the founder at the show and hopefully there'll be a visit in the diary soon and go and take a much closer look. We're definitely one of the most interesting bikes and tech of the show, if not the entire year so far. There were many beautiful looking bikes at the show, but one of the prettiest, in my opinion, was from Haley Cycles, a Colorado based frame builder that makes exclusively titanium frames. And my word, were they pretty to look at. So frames are all made from titanium and all handmade in Colorado and everything's bespoke. And what's neat is where normally a bespoke frame manufacturer would charge you for every optional extra, like custom geo, mudguard mounts and other details. With Haley, there's one price and that one price gets you everything under the sun in terms of customization and that personalization you want in such a frame. And the bikes are lovely to look at. You won't find a bad weld on these frames at all. And it's a painted tire frame as well. Now I know the jury is out on painted versus natural tie. Many people buy a tire frame for its natural color, but personally I do like a painted tire frame. And speaking to the Haley Cycles founder, they actually revealed that nine out of 10 frames they make and produce are painted, which is really interesting. Definitely a bigger number than I thought it'd be. But when you see how good a painted tire frame looks, then why wouldn't you? It looks amazing. Personally, I go for a half and half. So front half of the frame painted, fading to a natural rear end to show that it's a titanium frame and to retain some of that appearance of tire with a bit of color over the front half. But let me know what you think by leaving a comment down below. And if you enjoyed this video so far, then a sub to the channel would be tremendous. But the best bike I saw at the show and in at number one in this video was from number 22. It's a bike brand I've heard quite a bit about over the last few years, but I've never seen one in the flesh before until Seattle when I saw six of them in one go. And wow, just wow, absolutely top level workmanship, amazing quality, fantastic attention to detail, and the passion from Mike, one of the co-founders, were just incredible. Just fantastic looking bikes. Very, very expensive, of course, but what you're getting is probably 
absolute perfection in terms of bike design and manufacturing. The bikes definitely have a distinctive appearance and they make lots of the parts of the bike themselves, like the 3D printed dropouts, which are smoother and more seamless than I've seen in any other frame. Even a Moots or a Mason doesn't have a patch on the smoothness on show here. They also have their own 3D printed stem made from titanium with full internal K routing and their own fork as well. They had quite a few bikes on display, but the one that really grabbed my attention was the Drifter. This is their all road stroke gravel bike, and you have it as an off road bike with knobby tires, or as they showed it, sort of an Audax fast touring bike. So fat slick tires and their own custom made titanium mud guards or fenders if you're watching the US. And the neatest detail were the couplers in the top tube and down tube that allowed a frame to break in half to be put in a suitcase for easy traveling. So much easier than putting a normal bike into a hard case, it would just fold in half and go in a normal suitcase. And normally on a travel bike, the couplers, like the s, &S couplers, are quite bulky and distinctive, but these aren't that at all. The lines just fade away into the beauty of the frame in a way I've never seen before. So just a, another demonstration of the attention to detail on how they strive for that absolute perfection. Just stunning frames. And that's why this bike was my star of the show. And I saw hundreds and hundreds of bikes over three days at the show. But this, the Drifter from number 22, was my standout pick and a bike I would buy if I had the opportunity to buy one bike, money or object from the show. Anyway, let me know what you think of these bikes and whether you agree or disagree with my list by leaving a comment down below. And if you're seeing more coverage from Sea Otto Classic, then do check this video right here. Really nice round up of bikes in that video for sure. And also don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button right here. But that's all for today. I'll see you again very soon. Thank you so much for watching.